Hey, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything, and this is my Takisawa 14x40 Japanese metal turning lathe, and I am missing a change gear, so today we're gonna see if we can make one on the 3D printer. Check it out. So if you've watched my channel before, you might recognize this machine. I bought this at an auction for $350 like a year and a half ago, and I've really enjoyed using it. It's a super smooth, super precise machine, but since I got it at an auction, I was missing some parts. I've scoured the internet and got extremely lucky buying an entire set of change gears on eBay for about an additional $200, which is a really, really good price. The problem is I'm missing one. And of course, that one change gear that I'm missing is the one I need to do a job. Now, the change gears for this machine are a Mod 1.5 style gear. Now, I had no idea what that meant, and I did a little bit of research to find out that Mod 1.5 is a pretty standard transmission gear. And now, all that is is really dictating the size and the pitch of the teeth. So, on this machine, there's a couple of charts, and they explain in these charts how you can accomplish different pitches in both metric and standard threading. I need to cut a 5 8 11 thread on the outside of a 5 8 steel rod, and for that I need a 95 tooth gear. Now I have no experience cutting gears on the milling machine using a dividing head, and at the time of needing this gear, I don't have the time to learn how to cut gears and make sure they're gonna work and risk damaging the other change gears that I have, which work perfectly fine. So I did what any person in my generation would do is I went right onto the internet and tried to figure out how to do this. Um, now, I have a 3D printer and I have some experience 3D printing, but most of the stuff that I 3D print is really like non-structural, right? Nothing's really ever gotta work. It just needs to look cool or it's a prototype that I'm then gonna make out of metal. So for this, what I did was I went online and I found a gear generator through actually a website that sells gears that they manufacture. It was called rushgears.com. I'll put a link right here. Now I have no affiliation with this website, but I happened to find it and it was a really huge help for me. On this website, I was able to generate a 3D file of the exact gear that I wanted. And then I could just bring it into a slicing software like Cura, if you're familiar with 3D printing, 3D print one and see how it works. Now, while this gear is printing, let me show you what the inside of the gearbox on this machine looks like and what the change gear charts look like so you can understand what I'm looking for. All right, so for those of you who've never seen a lathe like this, what we've got here is a couple of different charts and they basically show the orientation of your change gears and then the configuration of your change levers for how to get certain pitches. So. This is the chart that we're gonna focus on. So I'm gonna bring you in close to this one. This is the standard uh, American thread pitch chart with a bunch of different values here. So this is the thread that we wanna cut, 11. So in order for me to do that, I need a 30 tooth change gear, a 95 tooth change gear, and an 80 tooth change gear. And I need to set my levers to A and position four in the gearbox. Now, A, position four, obviously I can do that. 30 and 80, no problem. The 95 is where I'm held up. So these are all the change gears that I got for this machine. Now, when I bought it, it only had the change gears that were actually inside the machine, uh, and there was no other change gears in the shop. I actually made sure to ask, and I was one of the first people to get to the auction for pickup, so I actually went through some of the cabinets that had been sold and anything that was near the lathe. And if you ever do buy a lathe at an auction and you can't see the change gears in the photos, I always recommend you look in the other lots, look in some of the cabinets and some of the drawer units and toolboxes to see if the change gears for the lathe you're looking at are in the shop. Because I would almost bet you that they're there somewhere. It's just a matter of whether or not you're gonna wind up getting them or if someone else is gonna wind up buying them. So like I said, I found this set of change gears on eBay and I was very lucky to get them. And now these change gears range in sizes. Um, this smallest one that I have right here is a 50 all the way up to, I believe, 127 teeth. Now, these are all great and I'm sure one day I'm gonna need them. But when I was going to do this job and I noticed, all right, here's the 80 tooth gear that I was looking for earlier and I got to these, this is an 85, and so is this. 
Now, when I had bought these change gears, I kind of thought that I had an 85 and a 95, but I go from 85 up to my next size, which I believe is 100, which is in the machine. This is 115, 120, and so on. Now, currently I have my machine set up to thread half 13. So in order to do that, I have to put in a 30 tooth gear, a 100 tooth gear, and a 65 tooth gear. But here's what's going on inside this gearbox. So if I take off some of these screws, I can get to some of these change gears. So this is the 30 tooth change gear I need, and I need this 80 tooth change gear down here in the lower section. That leaves me the 95 tooth gear that has to go here with this tooth pitch and all that. Now, one of the things that encouraged me about 3D printing this gear is this 100 tooth gear, for whatever reason, has plastic teeth on it. It is a metal gear with plastic teeth. Now, I don't know if this came off another machine. I don't think it did because the paint, you know, is similar to these other ones. But for whatever reason, there are plastic teeth, which I would assume is like a safety measure in case you really crash the machine. You blow these teeth off before breaking any of the other gears that are inside the head. Um, breaking these gears is fine, right? These are replaceable, even if they are difficult to get, but breaking something inside the head would be obviously detrimental to the machine and you'd really be in trouble. So thinking about this made me think that 3D printing would definitely be a possibility. So here's the 3D printed gear, fresh off the machine, and you can see immediately that the teeth mesh is just perfect. Um, now that gear generator that I told you about worked incredibly well and I was able to program in the bore and the keyway size which I had measured before I went onto the computer. Now the problem is that the bore is just a little bit too small if I try to get this spacer in there uh, it doesn't fit so we're actually gonna have to bring this onto the lathe and drill this out and maybe adjust this keyway. So I'm gonna drill it out with this drill bit which happens to be like pretty much the perfect size. Um, and this, when I 3D printed this, I had an assumption that I might be a little small on my bore, which is fine. I left a couple extra layers in there when I sliced it, so I would have a little bit of material that I could just skim out. It's very, very close. So this is the spindle that I've got to fit this onto, that little adapter. Yeah, that's perfect. So by drilling that out, I've got now a really good fit. The keyway still fits. There's a little tiny bit of slop, but I think it'll be all right. All right, so back inside the machine, I've got this 3D printed gear over on the spindle. And in order for me to get this on, I've got to loosen this nut here. This will fall. And then this spindle actually you move. You can also loosen that. So So right away you can see how well you can see how well that gear meshes. It really is like such a nice fit, which is awesome. And and the reason that these gears mesh well is just because that generator is putting the perfect tooth size out for these and the 3D printer did a really correct and accurate job to print these parts correctly. You know, if it had scaled this by even 1%, these teeth probably wouldn't have meshed well. It's also super important that these mesh well because if there's not good engagement between these teeth, they're absolutely gonna just shear right off as soon as this is under load. All right, so I've got all my locks on my gears. I've got really good engagement. I'm gonna close the cover. I'll check and make sure the lead screw is spinning, and then we're gonna actually test this under load by cutting that thread, which is the whole reason that I went through this entire endeavor. So in order for me to get the 11 threads per inch that I want, I have to set my gearbox lever to A. I have to set my gear tumbler over here to four, four. And then right here is the changeover between my feed screw and my lead screw. So I'll change it over to my lead screw. And now when I turn on the machine, my lead screw, which is this upper screw, should spin. All 
All right, so everything is all set up. Um, I've got my DRO set up so that I can properly line everything up. I've got my lead screw and all my gears and levers engaged to exactly where they need to be. Everything is looking really good. Gonna zero off. I just gotta check my feed. Let's try to take a heavy cut and see how we do. Huh. Well, Well, I blew apart the insert and that's just bad practice on my part, but that just goes to show you that I blew apart the insert before I broke the plastic change gear. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So now after just that little bit of work, just inspecting the gear, uh, right now, I don't see any signs of it being broken. None of the teeth are broken. None of them even look worn. Um, and like I said, because I have really good contact, because this gear pitch is perfect, I don't see me breaking too many of these teeth. But since I 3D printed this here, I could just make more of them, as many of them as I could ever want. All right, so despite me blowing that carbide insert up and not being able to actually cut the threads that I wanted to show you. Um, I did use this gear in practice and I was able to complete a job where I needed to cut 5 eighths threads in a alloy steel shaft that I got from Online Metals. So it was a particularly hard piece of material to cut and by using the carbide insert on that threading tool I was able to get the piece cut and the only damage that I noticed the gear suffered was one of the teeth broke. And I think I know the reason that that tooth broke in particular. Now, you notice in my gearbox, there are little locking collars that keep the gears from sliding in and out on the shafts. I didn't have those always. And every once in a while, the gears would kind of work their way off the shaft. And I think this got like a weird bit of engagement and it blew off one of these teeth. Now, the beauty of this is with the 3D printer, I've now printed three of these gears. So I've got backups. Um, and as long as I always have one backup, chances are I'll be able to complete the job that I need to complete with these plastic gears. Now I ordered a steel transmission gear in the same mod 1.5, um, but honestly, I don't know that I'm ever really gonna use it. I could drill it out and I could cut in the keyway just so I have it, but these 3D printed gears are amazing. Um, they work really well and they hold up and somebody on my Instagram, where I first originally posted this, mentioned that they're a lot quieter than steel gears, which is something that I never really thought of. Now, obviously this wasn't really so much of a tutorial because your lathe that maybe is missing change gears might have a different pitch that you can't generate online, um, but there are a lot of resources to get gears generated in a 3D file format if you're not able to draw them on your own. I wouldn't be able to draw this gear accurately. Uh, I just don't have the computer generating skills. I don't have the Fusion 360 skills or the AutoCAD or, or Rhino skills. So to be able to generate this from that website, which I said I'll link down below, um, was a huge deal for me. And basically I was able to 3D print this gear the night that I needed it. And by the next day I had it, I was able to cut the part and get the job delivered to a client, which I mean, you can't beat that. Literally instant manufacturing of a product or a project that is gonna help you finish up your next project. So if you have a lathe and you don't have the change gears, look into this. Even for the cost of entry to buy a 3D printer, is probably less than buying all the change gears that you might need and you could print all of them in plastic. The other thought I have on this is that if the other two change gears in my machine were also plastic, I highly doubt that I would have broken any of the teeth because the coefficient of friction on them would all be the same. So it wouldn't be metal wearing plastic, it would be plastic on plastic and the only real failure point would be here at the keyway. So think about it. If you are on the fence about having a 3D printer in your shop, 
reconsider it. I don't use mine all that often, but when I do, this literally saved me from losing this job. I would have not been able to accomplish it without this. Um, and you know, this will allow me to make hundreds, if not thousands more dollars using my lathe, being able to cut threads that need this 95 tooth gear. So that about does it for this video. I first showed this off on my Instagram, which you can check out right here at Make Everything Shop. I post pretty much every day that I'm working in the shop and I always like to answer questions and show behind the scenes what projects I'm working on. Um, when I 3D printed this, I really wasn't sure if it was gonna work. And then I got a bunch of messages on there and comments telling me about how other people do this all the time and how it works really, really well. So hopefully this encourages someone who has a lathe that's missing change years to look into 3D printing them themselves. If you're interested in the 3D printer that I'm using, it is a Maker Made. I'll throw a link down below to that as well. I've used it a bunch and it's been really good, super reliable, but there are other options out on the market if you're trying to just get started and maybe want one with a couple less features or maybe with a smaller print bed to do smaller jobs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have comments or suggestions on how to maybe make these gears last longer, I did print them in PLA, so I know there are other materials I could have used. Uh, leave them down below and don't forget to thumbs up this video and like it if you enjoyed it and you got something out of it. If you want to see more stuff going on in the shop and what I have coming up next, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications. There's a bunch of really cool projects coming up. I've been fixing and working on my machines a lot lately and I've been doing a little bit more kind of organizing and some tool videos, but I'm telling you there is a bunch of really awesome projects in the pipeline that I can't wait to share with you. I hope you're there to watch them. Again, I am Chris Zepp from Make Everything. Thanks again for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one.